Hey YouTube, welcome to the channel. If you like to learn things, but don't have a whole lot of time, then you are in the right place. This channel covers home automation, DIY home repair, boating, cooking, but quickly. Each one of the videos makes some assumptions about your previous knowledge level for the topics that that video covers. But don't worry, the videos build on one another. So if you start watching a video and you find you don't know how to accomplish one of the tasks in the video, the previous videos will be linked up in the cards so that you can take a look at them and get up to speed. That way you can pick up tasks at whatever knowledge level you're at and follow along without having to worry about scrolling through a whole bunch of nonsense that you already know how to do. In this video, we're gonna cover how to make your home assistant server available from the internet. Before we get started, I've got some very exciting news though. I've got a bunch of home automation gear that I'm gonna be giving away. More information about that at the end of the video, so make sure that you stay tuned. Why would you wanna make your home assistant server available from the internet? There's a bunch of different reasons. First is that when you install the home assistant companion application on your cell phone, it keeps track of your location. And then you can perform automations based on your location. So when you leave the house, you can turn off all the lights, the TVs, the stereo. You can have the garage door closed behind you if you forgot to close it. Then on your way back to the house, you can have it open the garage door for you so that you don't even have to push a button. It'll just automatically open. And then if it's dark outside, you can have it turn on some lights for you as well so that you're not walking into a dark house. Or if you want the music to be playing when you walk in, you can have it turn on the stereo. If you've got speakers near the doors, you can have it do the HAL 2000 thing and welcome home, Dave. All kinds of cool things. But step one to that is exposing your home assistant server to the internet so that you can communicate with it when you're not home. Full disclosure, the method that I'm going to show you today requires that you modify your firewall to allow traffic in to communicate with your home assistant server. Due to the number of firewalls that are out there, all the different vendors, manufacturers, Ubiquiti, Netgear, Linksys, Cisco, Meraki, all, all kinds of them, I'm not going to cover that portion of it. There are some great tutorials on YouTube and Google that you can follow for your specific firewall to learn how to do that. Now, if making changes to your firewall doesn't sound like something that excites you or isn't something that you wanna do, then make sure that you stay tuned for our next episode when we cover how to expose Home Assistant to the internet using a cloud service called Nabucasa. So in this video, we're going to be covering how to do this using DuckDNS. Let's get started. All right, so let's head on over to the configuration tab and go to add-ons, backups, and supervisor. And then we're gonna go to add-ons, add-on store. And we're gonna click duck DNS, click install. And then we can go over and take a look at the documentation. You need to go and visit duckdns.org, sign up for an account. So go ahead and log in there. You'll see I'm logged in already. Enter the host name that you would like to use to access your home assistant server and click add domain. Then you'll see the domain and IP populate below that. Then copy that token from the top of the page. We'll need that in the next step. Then here on the configuration tab, we're gonna get rid of that empty domain up on top and you're gonna type in the full domain name that you chose at DuckDNS. So your host name .duckdns.org. Then paste that token in. Then under the Let's Encrypt section, we're gonna change accept terms from false to true, and we're gonna change the algorithm for the certificate. Then we'll go ahead and click Save. We'll go to the Info tab, we'll enable the watchdog, and then we'll go ahead and start DuckDNS. You'll see that turns green. And we're going to go back to configuration, add-ons, add-on store. And in the add-on store this time, we're going to add the studio code server. Click install. Now we're going to enable watchdog and show that in the sidebar. And then we'll go ahead and start that. And you'll see that turns green as well. Back to configuration, add-on store. There's one more thing that we need to install here, and that is DNS mask. 
Click install there. After that's installed, we'll enable the watchdog service and we'll go ahead and start that. Then we'll go over to the configuration tab. We need to make an entry so that you can resolve your home assistant server by name from inside your network. So we'll go ahead and enter the host name that you chose. And then we'll enter the internal IP address of your home assistant server. Once you've entered that, click save. Then that'll ask to restart. We'll go ahead and restart that. Then on the left, click Studio Code Server, Configuration. And now we need to configure your home system server to use SSL. So we'll add a section here, HTTP colon. This will be down in the description for you, so you can just copy and paste it right into your config. Once we've got that done, head over back to Add-ons, Backups, and Supervisor. System, Restart Core. And now in order to access that, we're gonna to have to access that via HTTPS instead of HTTP. So we'll go ahead and make that change in our browser. And here we get this error because we're accessing it by IP, not by name, but we're fine. There's the login. All right, so after you complete this, the last thing you're gonna to have to do is go into your DHCP server setup on your network and change the DNS server for your DHCP clients to be the IP address of your home assistant server. That way, whenever your phone connects to your internal Wi-Fi, it will resolve the internal IP address for your home assistant setup so that it doesn't have any problems getting to your home assistant server. You'll also be able to access your home assistant server from your internal network by host name then instead of IP address, and you won't get that error message that we just saw. All right, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. And if you guys are here just to learn about the giveaway, then there are a couple of rules. The first rule is that you need to be in the continental United States due to shipping and duty and all that kind of stuff. That's, I I'm sorry. Second thing, the giveaways are based on the number of subscribers that the channel has. So when the channel reaches 250 subscribers, we're going to give away an Amazon Fire 7 tablet. When the channel reaches 500 subscribers, we're going to give away an Amazon Fire 10 tablet. When the channel reaches 750 subscribers, we're going to give away another Fire 10 tablet, but this tablet will also come with a wall mount so that you can mount that Fire 10 tablet to your wall and use it to control your smart home. So how do you enter? First thing is that you need to subscribe to the channel. The next is that you need to comment on one or more videos. When the channel reaches one of those subscriber milestones, the next video that I make, I'll go through all the comments on all the videos and randomly pick one, and I will announce that winner in that video, and they'll have to contact me and we'll arrange for shipping. So make sure that you subscribe, like the videos, and tell all your friends about it to get that subscriber count up. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned. Hope you were able to implement what you saw here today. I hope you found it helpful, and we will see you next time.